Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now you know how inefficient and in incapable I am at PowerPoint. You've seen it just in time PowerPoint presentations for CastCon. Um, so, uh, I have some housekeeping. We're not expecting a fire alarm. Uh, in the event of a fire alarm, it, it'll be a loud noise and you'll recognise it. Uh, there are three exits, two at the back, one behind me on the left-hand side. Please use those exits uh, in a, an orderly fashion. Um, people often say, uh, follow me because they'll be the first out. Well, I probably won't be. I'm, I'm a bit deaf. Um, so the assembly point is outside in the car park towards the right-hand side, and it's labelled AP18. Uh, there are unisex toilets in this university, which uh, to access, you can go out to the left-hand door and turn left, and then to, sort of to, towards my left-hand side there. Um, they're coloured puce, because that's a sort of mixture of pink and blue. Um, and uh, there are female toilets, if you prefer, for the females, that is, um, which are opposite the Costa, uh, which is out of the door and turn right. Um, lecture room th one, which is where the other sessions B, D and F are happening after the plenaries, uh, you can go out of either door uh, and as long as you turn right you'll end up in the far corner of the building and that's where lecture room one is. Um, and if you sign up for a tour or you want to sign up for a tour this afternoon, then please, can you go to the registration desk where they'll give you the information and put your name on the list. And the tours will be covering uh, a number of labs. There are three tours organised, two at 2 o'clock and one at the 3.45, way. I think it is. Okay, um, so without more ado, I'd like to hand over to our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Sir Peter Gregson, who would like to welcome you to Cranford. Thank Thanks, you, Peter. Well, thank you very much indeed, Mark, and it's uh, a great pleasure to be here. My name is Peter Gregson. Uh, I'm a metallurgist by background, so I actually have some affinity with some of the conversations that are going to be taking place today. But a very warm welcome to you all. Uh, I think today's conference is actually a reflection of two things that are important uh, to me. One is the convening power and the opportunities that universities have and responsibilities that we have to bring together uh, groups from wider society, from outside the university, uh, to be able to share, to be able to think about the future and to develop as a group, and I'll say a bit more about that in just a second. And the second, and this relates more to our priorities at Cranfield, is that as a university we're very proud of the deep and meaningful way in which we work with industry. Uh, that shapes our future programs, it shapes our future investments, and so it's a particular pleasure to be able to host here uh, a, an industry-led uh, conference of this time. You've already been welcomed to Cranfield. I think uh, many of you were here last night for the debate at uh, the uh, Management and Development Centre. Uh, I understand that was a, an honourable draw uh, between those from the cast metal background and those from the additive layer background. Uh, that's just as it ought to be and I've got no doubt that uh, the, uh, the conversations today will continue in the vein of everybody contributing to the, to the greater whole. Uh, there are always areas that particular companies, particular uh, backgrounds are stronger in than others and if we are going to be competitive as a nation and we're going to be able to have an industrial strategy that means something in terms of uh, enhanced <coughs> economic uh, activity, then we need to continuously work better together whilst obviously respecting that we are also competing as organisations. But that spirit of co-opetition is really important uh, and it's really important nationally that uh, we aim to increase the cake rather than our slice of the cake because that ultimately uh, rises the tide for everybody. A conference of this type I think is here for three purposes. First of all, of course, it's to share technological advances in your uh, area and from your company and your particular background and that will be of interest to others. 
Secondly, and very importantly, I think it's an opportunity to grow as a wider community. And Pam was just explaining to me uh, the way in which this uh, whole area has a very proud heritage and you are looking to reshape a, 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 a regular get-together uh, in this way. And I hope that uh, you will learn together and this will be a platform for a new style of engagement uh, for your community. So that business about meeting as a community, uh, getting to know people who you don't yet know is a really crucial part of a conference like this. And the third then is to recognize that as you leave here, I hope that you leave with strong memories of new friends made, uh, strong uh, strength and relationships with people that you already knew, but most importantly, raised ambition for the future because the point of coming here is to uh, get you out, focus on something a bit different, and then take away a very strong <coughs> positive, and then deliver on it. So that's why Cranfield is delighted to be able to host you today. This is an initiative developed within Cranfield Manufacturing, which is led by Professor Raj Roy. Uh, Raj and the team in Cranfield Manufacturing do a sterling job not just in leading the capacity and capability development for the future in terms of our education and our research that's strongly aligned towards the needs of industry, but also in getting industry together to be able to focus on the future challenges. And one of the high spots in the university year each year is the national manufacturing debate, which is held in this room chaired by Lord Browers, former president of the Royal Academy of Engineering and former uh, chair of the House of Lords Science and uh, Advisory Committee. Uh, and he hosts, he chairs that event each year. Some of you may have been to it. If you haven't, it's a really important event uh, that starts to shape some of the future challenges that then will inform things like the industrial strategy, the priorities within Bayes and so on. So a really important way in which business, academia can get together probably with the minister to inform future policy <coughs> development. Obviously this conference is uh, very much the, uh, has been drawn together by Mark and Pam. Uh, to all our sponsors I say thank you very much indeed, but I think at this stage and before handing over to Pam who is going to chair this session, I'd like you to join me in thanking Mark and Pam and all who have supported them in getting us together and getting us off to a flying start. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Sir Peter. Um, well, I'm delighted to be able to welcome uh, so many of you um, to Cascon. Um, we thought we might be taking a risk in attempting to organise an event of this style. But I think the, um, the decision to go ahead has been vindicated by, um, by so many of you being here. And as, as the organisers of the event, uh, we'd like to welcome you all. I'd particularly like to welcome uh, Trevor Eyre as well, who's the Senior Vice President of ICME, and also John Patterson, President of the Die Casting Society, as well as Lynn Possel from Foundry Trade Journal, all of whom have helped to promote the event. We also have a number of international suppliers to the investment casting industry here, so I think we can say that this event really does cover the breadth of the industry. So thanks on our behalf to everyone who's been in involved, including all of our speakers, exhibitors, and of course the foundries. I'm particularly pleased to see representative, representatives from the Department for International Trade in the form of Lawrence Davis, and also representatives from Bayes. I hope you're aware by now that we have a, uh, a conference app. So details of the speakers, the exhibitors and the programme, which has changed slightly from the printed version, can all be found on the app. Um, and you can use the conference code um, to access this once you've downloaded it. We've mentioned the tours. We are um, quite limited in spaces for tours. Unfortunately, the university weren't able to to get enough, uh, well, more people to be able to put extra tours on. So if you do want a tour and you haven't already booked, um, please do go to the registration desk. And I'm sorry, I'm sure that some of you are going to be disappointed, 
but I'm sure that uh, Mark and his team would be happy to welcome you at a future occasion um, to have a tour of the facilities that are here. So if you don't manage to get a tour today, please do um, obviously get in touch with us or with Mark directly and um, I'm sure we can facilitate something. Um, I should also mention that um, we are videoing the proceedings in here and also in the other room. So if anybody um, has a, a problem with that or has an objection, then do make yourself known to the organisers so that we can make sure that, uh, that you're not shown or, or visible on the, on the screen. Um, as we heard uh, last night, for those of you that were, attend, uh, were able to attend the evening session, um, the industry is growing globally. Uh, at the Cast Metals Federation, we've just carried out an industry survey that has shown an 11% recovery in the UK industry, which is very encouraging. The question perhaps, however, is just how much of the industry will be here in the UK? And let's make sure it's the high value, high profit stuff. And that gives me to the next key finding from our recent census, which was that a lack of skills, shortages in technical know-how, is a particular challenge for the industry at this time. Encouraging then that Trevor Eyre will be speaking later about the four, uh, £4 million investment in the new National Foundry Training Centre. And I'd like to invite anyone who's interested in finding out more about the centre and how to support it uh, by taking on apprentices, upskilling existing employees or offering sponsorship or support with teaching to make sure you pop by the ICME stand to register your interest. So with this in mind, it's particularly pleasing to see so many young people, apprentices and students in attendance. And we're grateful to the financial support of the Tor Lodge and Apple Cross Trust who've covered the costs for this. As young people, there are many opportunities for you in the, in, in the industry. So I don't, I'd encourage you to make the most of today and future events like it. Listen, learn, ask questions and meet as many people as you can. And don't be fooled into thinking casting is a black art. It's the application of science and molten metal obeys the laws of physics. I also know that one of the initial um, casting diploma students who was supported in completing the qualification whilst he was at Thomas Dudley Foundry is now a co-author of John Winter's presentation today. And we also have a former graduate from our foundation degree programme that's unfortunately low, longer running. So it's particularly pleasing for, for Paul Gullick and I who were there at, at the beginning to see how these young people are progressing in their careers. <coughs> 